hey, so you just saw a cover of Little Blue by Jacob Color in 26-tone equal temperament, and you're probably wondering why. I picked this tuning for a very special reason, and before we get into it, I'd like to actually talk about the Little Blue chord progression. I see a surprisingly low number of videos addressing the cool thing that I see happening in the pre-chorus. So, as you may know, the standard song is in E flat, you know. Right? So that's the key we're in, is E flat. And what happens in the pre-chorus is we have a progression that has like a descending bass line, right? Because you're not so far away, I hear you say, you'll never walk alone. Right, singing, don't. And it comes back to the key that way. So the chords that we've got are um, C minor, then G minor, then A flat. Da, then E flat, like major seven with the G in the bass, then D flat, major seven. So, and then you'll never walk alone. That's A flat going to D flat. So this gives us kind of a Mixolydian vibe, right? And then that just goes directly back to E flat. And then there's D flat, A flat with the C in the bass. So some of those sets are right. Now, that's a pretty standard progression where you get into Mixolydian, but then, the next time the pre-chorus comes around, something really clever happens. Um, instead of going to A-flat, like on the third chord, you know, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo, what happens is, uh, instead the chord progression goes to A minor. So, then, the descending bass line idea continues into sharpy territory instead of flatty territory. And then Jacob sings... His melody is slightly altered, but it ends up, you'll never walk alone, ends up in D instead. Um, and so it's transposed up a half step. But then, at the end of that chord progression, he gets us back into C sharp and sort of snaps us back to E flat with a Mixolydian feel without, you know, really getting into Mixolydian territory. So he's forced us to spell D flat the first time he uses the pre-chorus, and then the second time we should spell C-sharp, and then it just snaps back to E-flat. So let me show you how that second pre-chorus works. So the second pre-chorus works like this. Do -do -do. C minor, G minor, then A minor. Sing in. And then it's right back. So, here's what we did. We had C minor, G minor, then instead of A flat, we had A minor, and then like C major 7 with a G in the bass. There's some sites that say E minor, but I hear B and C sung in the voices. Then F, and then you'll never walk alone. That's how you know the theme has drifted up a half step, because he does that distinctive piece of the melody a half step up from before. So A, da 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 da, that's D going to E. That's Caden singing the same way it did before, right? With D flat to E flat. D to E. And then it goes B, C sharp. Singing. And then these notes still come from E flat. So the thought I had with 26 tone equal temperament was twofold. Um, the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to make it so that C sharp and D flat would be pretty far apart, but I'd also have a tuning system where I didn't have any microtonal accidentals so that it was pretty easy to play on the Lumiton. And so I chose 26 tone equal temperament because a C sharp chord and a D flat chord are like, you know, two twenty sixths of an octave apart. So that's a little bit less than a semitone, but not very much. Maybe it's like 80 cents or something. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Um, so what that does is, instead of having this progression come around and, you know, like, first pre-chorus here. There's that D-flat there, right? And 
do 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 There's that C sharp. So 26 tone equal temper make, makes makes that C sharp and the D flat from before sound really different. So that was the goal I wanted. Um the other uh one that I was thinking about is well, 26 tone equal temperament also has a chromatic semitone that's really small. What that means is when you go from D to D sharp, it's only 1 26th of an octave. So that also means that there's less of a contrast between the two pre-choruses. And in Jacob's version, you have uh, something that's clearly flatty and something that's clearly sharpie. And in 26 tone equal temperament, I'd say it's still clear, but since it's mellowed out, and the quality is more closer sounding to equal, it's not as big of a contrast. And so a D chord and a D flat chord in 26 tone equal temperament, you know, are only 1 26th of an octave apart, you know, about 40 cents, whereas they're about 100 cents here. So mainly I was interested in making the two pre-choruses contrast this way. 26 tone throws this into contrast. Um, and it also does something else interesting. Um, since... After the second pre-chorus, we have to get to a C-sharp chord that's now different than a D-flat chord. It's slightly lower. Um, that means that when we um, sing our melody notes to get back in, um, if we want to keep them in that C-sharp key, it actually modulates, modulates us to D-sharp with the Lumitone. So um, D-sharp and E-flat are different keys in 26 tone equal temperament, and they're just as far apart as C-sharp and D-flat were namely about 80 cents. So you'll hear maybe a lot partway through the video after I'm done playing that second pre-chorus that instead of playing like on the blue and white keys sort of down in the middle of the Lumitone, there's a part where I'm playing like higher up and I'm using like the pink and orange keys more. That's the point at which I've modulated to D sharp major instead of E flat major. And it's great because for my perfect pitch here, I find that the E flat major and the D sharp major in 26 tone equal temperament both carry a little bit of an, an E flatty character, but D sharp is definitely like pulling us toward D in a strange way. Um, so now you can listen to it with that in mind. Um, I'd like to hop over to the Lumitone now and show you how those pre chorus chords sound in 26 tone equal temperament. So now we are over here at the Lumitone in 26 tone equal temperament. And basically C major is on the white keys here. And you can hear that um, it's uh, a flat tone scale in the sense that it's fifths on the flat side, the major thirds are on the flat side, and then the fourths are on the sharp side, and the minor thirds are on the sharp side. That also means that the, uh, the half step or the distance between me and fa is large, and the distance, the whole step of the distance between do and re is smaller. So it is tending more on the side of getting closer to an equidistant seven note scale um, in terms of like just how the major scale is oriented. So um, these are the pre chorus chord progressions, right? We have this C minor. Um, So here's that C minor chord, and then G minor, dun, dun. and then here's A flat, right? And that's, you know, E flat, D flat. And then there's a D flat chord going to an E flat chord right there. And that's our mixolydian and vibe that we get. So if I were to go up here and play this progression now. There's a minor. There's not as much of a difference between this and A flat. Here, I'll show you. There's A flat, here's A minor. A minor, A flat. See, they only differ by a little bit. 
So there's not as much of a contrast. Jacob's version throws the sharpiness into the spotlight, and we get that sort of jolt of, like, new cool chord progressions. And this kind of makes it blend in, and it fits also with the mellow vibe of the tuning, which is also really neat. And then that mellowness also, like, uh, I think it carries into and informs the flatness of the D-sharp section. So now, let me kind of compare... Um, the two sections where it's modulated up a half step where he says you'll never walk alone. So like if you had, you know, the starting parts the same. Oops, sorry. And then that one there. So this is D flat going to E flat. And then here's the second one. Also, notice that the melody doesn't exactly just transpose. What happens is we have to have... During this part here, it doesn't go up to F. It goes up to E, G instead. And then we go down to, you know, B. And so that part is bouncing in fourths, but we have to do a little bit of playing to get to there. So... So let's say we have um, that A minor. And this is an A chord, right? So you can hear that it's not as different. Let's maybe take um, a shorter way there. So this is D flat to E flat. Here's D to E. Right? And here's D flat to E flat again. And D to E is. So they're just a, a little bit apart, just a tiny, tiny bit. Now, just as D and D flat, uh, you know, are very close, C sharp and D flat are far apart. So let's compare um, the pre chorus where we go to D flat, and then let's go to the second one and then land at C sharp, and we'll hear how far apart C sharp and D flat are. So um, when we have, you know, <laughs> it's hard to play this thing, so I have to kind of go through the whole progression if I want to get there, which is, you know, really beginner stuff. And that's okay. There's D flat, right? So now let's go to D and E again. There's our C sharp chord that we made it to. So the melody I'm playing here at the top is um, this F sharp going to E, like in a D chord, F sharp, E, then F sharp, G sharp. So this is the chord to listen for and how different it is from D flat, which is here. There's C sharp, there's D flat. Pretty different, right? C sharp, D flat. So, um, let's see. Uh, there's that D flat. And then let's try maybe going from here. I like, let's see. And then there's C sharp. It's D flat. Nope. Nope. That's E flat and there's D flat. And then going to here, C sharp. Now, let's try something else. Let's say in the second pre chorus, let's say I went back to the original key instead of modulating to D sharp. Um, so, like.
See how those nuts don't fit those CE fly notes? Yeah? So here, what actually happens instead is uh, if we have D, um, there are notes that are like C and E flat normally, but since we spelled it C sharp now, this has to be B sharp and D sharp, which modulates us to here now. Instead of where we were before, which was two different kind of E flat sounding areas, right? So like D sharps up here and E flats down here. Okay, great. There's also some other stuff, um, some neat tricks I did. Um, so it starts in E flat and modulates to D flat in my version. And then at the end, it appears to uh, disingenuously modulate up. And then at the very end, I use a microtone to end it in D instead. So the very last chord is actually a D from 26 tone equal temperaments perspective. Um, and I thought this was fitting with the character of how Jacob in the first pre-chorus gets us to think that he's just doing E flat mixolydian stuff. In the second pre-chorus, he gets us to think he has, in fact, modulated a half step higher because he's used the same themes there, but then the progression carries around to C sharp. So you see, I think that's the great part of this chord progression is that it's not just that he did something a half step higher for fun. It's that, like, there's meaning because afterwards he takes us to a place that we've been before in a new way while tricking us into thinking he's modulated a half step higher. So that's, I think, the important part. So I kind of wanted to, like, build on that, and I was like, oh, we I've modulated down, and I'm tricking you that I'm going to modulate back to the key, but then I continue to modulate lower. So it's that kind of... It's like that kind of chord progression dynamic that I wanted to put in there, if that makes sense, and I know it's not the exact same thing. And I'm sure the Patreon people know more about this, and Jacob himself has extremely specific thoughts about what's going on, and... I'd be very curious to hear them. But yeah, hopefully you uh, enjoyed this explanation. I just wanted to go into it a little bit because I feel like it's too it's too fun and too technical uh, and too great not to go into a little bit of detail about it. Um, thanks to the Now and Zen uh, patrons, by the way, uh, for supporting my podcast. Um, you can find the link in the description if that's something you're interested in supporting. I have a podcast about microtonality. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all uh, next time, hopefully with some, with some more great covers and things like that. So I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.